Hello, I'm Tessa Rickard, a nutritionist passionate about helping you to eat joyfully and digest like a pro. Welcome to the three minute vlog and my kitchen. Last week we had a look at some of the red flags for low stomach acid and one of the main signs being reflux. Most of us get reflux from time to time if we overeat or overindulge in rich foods, but it is not normal. And if you're getting it more than a couple of times a week, you might actually have GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease, and this needs addressing. When we get reflux, we are actually just experiencing the acid from our stomach coming up into contact with our esophagus, and in some cases, even spilling up into our throat and mouth, yuck. Unlike our stomach, which has a special lining that protects it from the highly acidic environment that stomach acid provides, our esophagus is not designed to come into contact with acid at all, which is why it is so darn uncomfortable when it does happen. It's literally burning that delicate mucosa which lines your esophagus. So why is this happening? There are a number of things that can affect your upper digestion that are well beyond the scope of this short three minute video. So I'm just gonna share a couple of the things that I see as a clinical presentation most often. The lower esophageal sphincter is meant to protect your esophagus from the contents of the stomach by contracting. It's only meant to be a one-way trip. When this sphincter isn't working properly and it allows stomach contents to spill up into the esophagus, regardless of how much acid or you do or don't have, any amount is going to cause major issues. So why would your sphincter malfunction? Well, we put a lot of physical pressure on it by using bad posture when we eat, eating too fast, overeating, and even obesity all contribute to the abdominal pressure that can affect your sphincter function. But what you eat definitely plays a role too. If you have low stomach acid and you eat difficult to digest meals, like those high in refined carbohydrates, spices, or fatty meals like deep fried food, you're far more likely to have reflux. Think KFC, donuts, or a big bowl of spaghetti bolognese. So why do I think this is occurring? Most common, commonly, the presentation I see in clinic goes a lot like this, and bear with me because it is a bit of a chicken and egg scenario. Once you start with the chronic reflux, you really do get stuck in this vicious cycle. As I established in the previous videos, low stomach acid is disastrous for good digestion. It creates a more alkaline environment where bacteria can thrive in the small intestine and impairs the release of enzymes that help us to break down our carbohydrates, both of which lead to a huge amount of gas production and increase that abdominal pressure that affects the lower esophageal sphincter's function. So low stomach acid is contributing to poor digestion, which contributes to bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine or carbohydrate malabsorption, which then causes large amounts of gas and abdominal pressure, which then contributes to the poor function of the lower esophageal sphincter. And all of this contributes to reflux. And so it goes round and round and round. And when you add junk food, antacids, Nexium, poor eating habits and obesity into the mix, it is a recipe for digestive disaster. If you don't do something about it, you can get to the stage where healthy foods or even just drinking water can cause really uncomfortable reflux. Do you need help getting off this out of control reflux merry-go-round? My six days of digestion mini e-course gives you the tools to stoke your digestive fire and switch off this cycle. But if you need more serious one-to-one -one help, please get in touch. I'm really passionate about working in this field and I would love to help you. If you think this video might benefit someone you care about, please share it with them. Knowledge is power. Next week, I'm going to be discussing Nexium. Is it making you worse? Have a wonderful week.